Hi there, I'm Brendan with Black Flag Builds, and today I'm going to walk you through my process for using Fusion 360 to design furniture by building a table for my office. I like to start my projects by making a quick sketch on the whiteboard to conceptualize what I'm trying to build. My drawing skills aren't the best, but they get the job done. As you can see here, I'm going for a table that has a double thick plywood top and the surface will sit across two cabinet bases. Before I began, I took some measurements of the space where this table is going to live and I've written down the dimensions on the sketch. I have 72 inches for the length, 23 inches for the depth, and 38 inches for the height. I decided to make the cabinets underneath about 18 inches in width because I like the ratio. Each cabinet will be one quarter of the total width. Now I'd like to point out that I chose 23 inches for the table depth because I wanted to be able to cut both layers of the top from the same sheet of plywood. A full sheet of plywood is 48 inches wide, but I need to account for the blade thickness so I can't just cut it into two 24 inch wide pieces. In my case, I rounded down to the next hole number to give myself some wiggle room. I'm also deciding to make the backs only 23 inches long. This means the back of the cabinets won't be fully enclosed but it means I can make less cuts while breaking down my plywood. You'll see what I mean as we go along. The first thing I like to do in Fusion 360 is to save and name my file. This just helps me stay organized and Fusion 360 will save in the background as I go. So I'm, I'm gonna start by creating some parameters which will allow me to establish the critical dimensions early and if I decide to change them later, I can do it in one place. I can do that by going to Modify, Change Parameters, and clicking this plus button here. I'm going to be using 3 quarter inch plywood for my build, so I'll add Apply Parameter and set it to 0.75 inches. I'll also add a Length Parameter for 72 inches, a Depth Parameter for 23 inches, I'll also add height, and this one's a little different. I want it to be 38 inches overall, but I want to subtract the two layers of the plywood that are going to be on the top. And so I can actually enter math right here in Fusion 360. So what I'll do is I'll type 38 minus ply times 2, and you'll see I get a dimension of 36 and a half. I'll also add width, and that's going to be very similar. I want 18 overall, but I want to subtract the two plywood sides. So I'll subtract ply times 2 and I'll get 16 and a half. I'm going to have a kick height, which is going to be the height of the shelf off the ground. In this case, it's 6 inches. I'll have a kick depth, which is how far back my kick plate will sit. And I'm just going to use a standard 3 and a half inches. And then I'm also going to use a trim depth as explained in the sketch earlier, this is just to avoid the baseboard trim, and that's going to be two inches. All right, with all this set, we should be able to we should be ready to go. So I'm going to start to model my table by creating a series of components. I'll need a side, a bottom, a kick plate, a, and a back for the cabinets, and I'll also need a component for my top surface. So I'll start with the cabinet side. I'll right click here and I'll go to new component and I'm going to slow double click here and I'm going to change the name of this just to keep organized as I go. So this would be cabinet side and I'm going to create a sketch by clicking this button here and I'll choose the bottom plane to work off of for this. I'll hit R on my keyboard to bring up my rectangle tool and I'll click from the origin and drag out. So in this case I want it to be ply and thickness and I want it to extend back by the depth. And if I stop sketch and zoom out a little bit, I can click on that profile, hit E on my keyboard to extrude it up into 3D space. And in this case, I'm going to extrude it up by the height. And if I zoom out a little bit, we can see I have a simple plywood board just standing up in 3D space. So next I want to model in the uh, cutouts for the toe kick area as well as the trim avoidance area that I need to build in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swing this around to the other side. I'm going to start a new sketch and I'm going to click the side of my panel here and draw right on the side of this panel. 
So the left edge here is going to be the back of my cabinet. So I will grab my rectangle tool by pressing R on the keyboard and I'll drag from this bottom corner here. And I want this to come in by trim depth and I want to bring it up by the kick height. And then I'm gonna draw another rectangle from the other corner and I want this to come in by the kick depth and kick height and height. And so I'll stop the sketch. I'll select these two profiles and I'll swing my view around here. I'll hit E on my keyboard to extrude and I'll drag those through the board. And you'll see I get a red box. That means we're cutting some holes here. I'm gonna choose uh, this extent option here and just say all. And that'll just make sure that we go through uh, the full width of the material that we're dealing with here. If we change that in the future, it will go through um, the full depth. Okay, I'll click OK here. And we have our cutouts. Next, I'm going to create another component for my kick plate. So we'll call this cabinet kick plate. And I'll create another sketch. This time I'm going to create the sketch right off the side of this previously drawn cabinet side. And so this kick plate is going to go right down here in the front. So I'll choose my rectangle tool with R on the keyboard. And this is going to be a plywood thickness. And it is going to be kick height. And that one's pretty simple. I'll stop the sketch. I'll select that profile. Swing us around into 3D view here. Select that profile again. I'll hit E for extrude and I'll bring that out by my width. We'll create another new component and this time it'll be for my cabinet bottom. And I'll click this create sketch button. Again, I'll draw right on the side of this one. And this is going to span right on top of that kick plate. So I'll go from this front corner here and it'll be plywood in thickness and it will be depth. And I'll stop the sketch. And very similarly, we can just grab that profile. I'll zoom in here a little bit so it's easier to grab. And I'll extrude that out by width as well. Okay, we're going to create another new component. This time it'll be for the cabinet back. And very similarly, I'm going to create a sketch. We'll draw right on the side again. And I'm going to draw from this top corner. And I want this to be ply and thickness. And in this case, I'm going to go down by depth. As we discussed earlier, I want this to be 23 inches uh, to match sort of some of the other dimensions uh, for easy cutting. So that's what that's going to look like. I'll zoom in a little bit here and select that profile we just created. I'll hit E for extrude, and that will come out by width as well. So now we can see we have all of the cabinet components needed to build a cabinet uh, portion of this build, except we're missing the other side. So instead of creating a whole another one on this side, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate it. So making sure that my top level component uh, is the active component, I will click once on cabinet side and I will hit M for move. And I'm going to click this create a copy checkbox and then I'll drag it over. Uh, and instead of eyeballing it, what I'm going to do is do a little bit of math here. So I want it to come over by the width plus the ply thickness. And if I hit OK here, you'll see that that put it right into perfect position and perfect alignment for the rest of my cabinet. Now I'm going to go ahead and create my top. So we'll do that just like we did the rest. I'll create a new component and we will call this tabletop. I'm going to create a sketch. And this one I'm going to sketch on this front plane here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, cabinet that we already have here in place just to reference off of. So I'll grab my rectangle tool with R. And from this front corner here, I'll go up by thickness of ply. And I will stretch it out by the length.
and I will stop sketch. And I'll zoom in just a little bit to grab that profile. And then I'll hit E for extrude, just like before. And I'm going to extrude this back by the depth of my, my table. All right. And very similar to how we did the second cabinet side, I'm going to uh, activate my top level component here, this work table, by clicking this little checkbox here, making sure that that's the active component. Then I'll grab tabletop, and I'll hit M on my keyboard for move. I'll check the create a copy box. I'll drag it up, and I really just want it to come up by the thickness of ply. And there we go. Okay, now if we swing around to the front, you'll see that I have a double thickness of plywood stacked right on top of each other and one left cabinet so far. So the only thing left to do is to build the right cabinet. And again, to save us some work, I'm just going to copy all of these components over to the right side. So I'll select all of these here in the tree. I'll hit M just like before for move. Check the create a copy box and I'll drag it over and here's where we'll have to do a little bit more math. So in this case, I want to move it over by the length, but then I got to move it back, shift it back to the left a bit by the width of the shelf. And then I have to also subtract the plywood thickness from each side of the cabinet. So plywood times two and hit okay. And so there we see that I'm in perfect alignment. I have both of my cabinets and my double thick top in place. The next step is a fun one. Uh, it's really just to kind of give an idea of what this is going to look like once we build it and paint it and finish it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, hit A on my keyboard to bring up the appearance palette. And I'm going to type in pine here. And Fusion 360 has this pine appearance built in. So I'm going to drag this over to my tabletop one and my tabletop two. And we can see now I have a nice representation of what it would look like if I used pine wood on the top there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm thinking about painting the bottom sections a dark gray. And so I'm going to look here. I like this uh, metallic dark gray paint. So what I'll do is I'll select all of my cabinet components in the tree over here. Oops. I'll select all of the cabinet components in the tree over here, and I'll drag that gray paint swatch right onto the model here. So now we have a representation of what this thing looks like. Uh, the next thing would be to export some sort of cut list so that we would know uh, what cuts to make when we get to the shop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file as a different file, and I'm going to call it flat pack. And the reason for that is so we don't make any changes to this one. I'm going to deconstruct this model now into um, everything laying flat on some sheets of plywood so that I can get my cut list. And I'd like to be able to retain this model um, so that I can see what it looks like in 3D assembled. So the first step is I'm going to create a new component. And I'm going to call this material. And I'll create a sketch just like before. In this case, I'll create a little sketch on this bottom plane. And I'll grab my rectangle tool and I'll drag out uh, a rectangle. And I want this to be the dimensions of a sheet of plywood. So we want 48 inches wide by 96 inches tall. If I hit stop sketch, I can then select this profile and extrude it up by the dimensions of my plywood. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn off all this other stuff just to kind of get it out of the way a little bit. And I'll start with one of my tabletops. So what I need to do is I need to use a feature in Fusion 360 called Joints. And what that allows me to do is select uh, a location on this piece and on this piece and put them together, joint them together. Um, and so that'll allow me to lay this piece into this plywood material so that I can create a cut list. So let's just do it. I'm going to hit J for joint. I'm going to select this corner up here and I want to move it into this corner here. 
And what I need to do is rotate it now so that it's inside of my plywood sheet by 90 degrees, it looks like. So I'll just type in 90 here and hit OK. I decided to speed this clip up because it was getting a little repetitive. I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I'm selecting my component, hitting J on my keyboard for the joint tool, selecting a spot on my component, and a corresponding spot on the material to place it. Sometimes I have to rotate it or slide it into place, as you'll see on the screen as it goes. The only real gotcha is that occasionally the piece will appear to float over the material and in order to get it planar with the material, you have to click the little flip button in the joint command, which I'll place a, an image on screen here to show you what that looks like. Now that we have everything laid out on the plywood sheets here, we can take this into a Fusion 360 drawing and dimension it out so that we have a cut list. I'll do that by going to File, New Drawing, and selecting From Design. I'm going to change this to 8.5 by 11 and hit OK. It'll take a few seconds for the drawing tool to come up. And you'll see that Fusion 360 gives us a pretty basic layout with some project details and a table down here. And if I move my mouse around, you can see that we're seeing these two weird rectangles. This is because the default orientation is the front view. If I change it to top, you'll see that we have a more accurate and interesting representation of what our cut list should look like. So the next step is I'm going to choose a scale here. Uh, you kind of just have to play around to see what uh, will fit on your sheet of paper here. It looks like 116 uh, will fit pretty well. So I'll choose 116. I'll find a place in the drawing where I want to place this and click, and then I'll hit OK. I don't really care to have all this uh, detailed information uh, for my drawing, so I'm going to select that and hit Delete. Now that we have our drawing placed on the document, what we can use is the dimension tool here to get the dimensions for each of the pieces we need to cut. So what I'll do is I'll click on an edge and I'll click again to place that dimension. And you'll see now that we know that this board will be 72 inches long by 23 inches here. If I need to get a dimension that's not as obvious, like for instance, these funky shapes here, if I zoom in, I can click one edge and then another edge, and that'll give me the distance between those two edges. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the clip while I go through and dimension out all of these pieces. Now that all the dimensions are done, I'll just dress up the document a little bit further. First, I'll add a screenshot that I took earlier of the project. So I'll click this image button here. I'll find the image on my computer. And you'll see I get a representation of what the image, how big the image is going to be. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll play with this scale here. I'll try 1.5, and that looks pretty good. So I'll just place it into my document there. Next, I'll add some text, and this will just be to add a little bit of a title just so I know what this project is called. So I'll call this Office Table Build. I will center it, I'll make it bold, and I'll make it a little taller. With those finishing touches, we can save the document or save the drawing, and we can output it to a PDF that we can print out for a reference in the shop. So that concludes this portion of designing furniture in Fusion 360. You can see I printed out my cut list here, uh, and this will help us build this uh, thing in the shop in the next video. 
this one wasn't too complex, and there's a couple of things that we didn't really talk about in Fusion 360 that we could maybe dive further into in the future. Uh, we could talk a little bit more about joints and how you could build more complex assemblies with that. We could talk about how you might add dados and rabbits and things like that. Uh, and we could also talk about uh, using the parameters a little deeper and how they can help you change your mind uh, with dimensions. Say you went from three quarter inch plywood to half inch plywood. You can change that in one spot in Fusion 360 and see, your, see it update live uh, in your model. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something and I'll see you next time.